so many things. Good afternoon, and welcome to the Fiegel site at Oakwood Cemetery. I'm Lester Fiegel, and proud to say I am a native of Rochester. It was back in 1884 that I was born just a little bit southwest of town here, out in Salem Township. Went to all my elementary school there, and stayed on in Rochester until I went to Rochester Business College. In fact, I was so attached to the schools that I went back to teach for a while in those country schools. But the banking business seemed to hold more promise for me. I started at the bottom as a messenger boy at Rochester National Bank in 1911 for the handsome salary of $20 a month. <laughs> However, it wasn't long before I was asked to be the deputy auditor. And so a year later, by November of 1912, I was elected as the county auditor of Olmsted County. That worked out perfect for me because shortly thereafter, December 29th to be exact, Anna Kenneth and I decided to be married. And so that completed the year of 1912. We had six children, four lovely daughters, and two fine sons. Our girls are named Elizabeth, Lavon, Audrey, and Elaine. And our sons are Leland and Lester Jr. Eventually, I became a cashier at the First National Bank and then was elected vice president, holding that position for many years until I retired in 1950. Three years after that, the Olmsted County Bank contacted me to be their president, and I went back to work and worked until I was at age 75, retired for a second time. But all this banking and financial stuff, I bet that's getting kind of boring. In fact, I bet for most of you, this is really a pretty dry subject. I, in fact, I think probably that's about all the things I would be able to talk to you about. Uh, perhaps I could help you out a bit, Dad? Well, Leland! <laughs> well, it's a good thing to see you. Folks, this is my son, Leland. He resides in Arlington National Cemetery, where he's been for the last 56 years. What a good thing. I'm glad to see you, son. Now, uh, you see, Leland... Dad, I came down here to tell people about you. Don't go start changing the subject. But, son, you are the decorated war hero. There's certainly much more interesting things than that than a stuffy old banker. Stuffy old banker? Try civic leader! My, you were in, instrumental in starting some of Rochester's most important organizations. The Kiwanis Club, the Knights Templar, the Shrine Club, the Olmsted County Agricultural Society, and our very own Olmsted County Historical Society. You were a member of the City Charter Commission for five years a member of the school board, the Chamber of Commerce, and you were a founding member of Rochester Airways, which later became the Rochester Airport oh, Company. Oh, Leland, enough, enough. These folks go on a grocery list of committees and organizations I served on. Lots of people have done their civic duties, just as I did. All right then, Dad, let's give them some lesser known information. How'd you make your first dollar? What? Come on, Dad. What great enterprise sent you on your path to fame and fortune? Well, well Come on. <laughs> all right. Gophers. <laughs> I used to trap gophers and sell them to a neighbor for five cents each. But hey, I graduated from gophers to grazing calves. My first sale there netted me ten dollars. We all have to start somewhere. But what about you, son? You're a recipient of the Distinguished Flying Cross and the British Flying Cross. I was just a pilot, Dad, doing what I was trained to do. And like anyone who succeeds, I had good people around me, people I could trust and rely on. I'm sure you know all about that, Dad. Yes, son, you know that. But there are some that say you're largely responsible for one of the major businesses located here. Oh, no. You're not going to start up on that IBM thing again, are you? <laughs> Why not? It is true, isn't it? Well, yes. I suppose in a way. Son, Thomas Watson Jr., president of IBM, was your co-pilot on that historic mission to Russia in 1942. It was you who introduced him to Rochester on your flight back. When IBM was considering cities to expand in, it was Rochester he remembered. But Dad, you and the Industrial Opportunities Incorporated group, you and your group were instrumental in bringing IBM here, not me. Well, it was the work of a lot of people, just like all successes are. But you had your part in it, so don't be so shy. In fact, Mr. Watson eulogized you at the announcement of IBM coming by saying you were one of the greatest men he ever knew. All right, Dad. C could we move on? Yes, son, we can. But I do want to tell these folks how very proud of you we are. You serve your country and your community with honor. 
your bomber group flew over a hundred successful missions in flying fortresses all over Europe. And that trip to Russia and Siberia in 1942, when you flew General Follett Bradley for meetings with Allied leaders and Joseph Stalin, your mother and I will never forget that trip. But I guess in all fairness, the most memorable thing though was when you flew home and left the same day of your wedding. <laughs> that was a trip. I left Shreveport, Louisiana at 11.20 a.m. on April 15, 1942, arrived right here in Rochester at 3 p.m., got married to my sweetheart, Anna Marie Towie, at 5.30, and left at dusk to get back to base. Anna Mae followed me down the next day. <laughs> You're right, it's not everyone who flies a four-engine bomber plane home to get married. That one made the papers. Our marriage, it was brief, but happy. We had two sons, John and Richard. They were ages four and one when my plane went down in 1948 outside Washington, D.C. We were returning home from a base, from a flight from Mitchell Field in New York, flying two, a two-engine C-43 when one of the two engines burst at 3,000 feet and we crashed. At the time, I had an office in the Pentagon and was working on a project that would combine the Navy and Army Air Forces. I'm glad to have had a part, albeit brief, in creating the finest Air Force the world has ever known. My military career, it was exciting. But those were exciting times. That was one of the saddest days of my life when we received the news of your crash. While the Fiegel family was devastated, the whole community shared in our grief. A military funeral was held in Washington with burial in Arlington National Cemetery but we wanted to memorialize you in your hometown. So I'm proud to say that a gravestone has been placed right here, right here in Oakwood Cemetery as a memorial to your life. I think we've talked enough about me. Uh, could we move on to something else? Uh, let's talk about something else, you in particular. My dad, you were leading the community in so many different ways. But you know, I think one of your last pieces of work was probably your best. You mean the windows? Those are the ones. Folks, in his final days when my dad was battling cancer, he wanted to do something permanent, what the Reverend Winfield Haycock at Christ United Methodist Church called one more beautiful thing, and the tall windows that grace the sanctuary that symbolize Easter's resurrection promise were truly that. It's a wonderful way to give, Dad, and a wonderful way to be remembered. Thank you, son. We all give in our own way. Service comes in many fashions. I think we are very lucky to be part of a community where giving and working together is such a way of life. It seems we are being held up as something special today, but I think maybe we were the ones who were blessed with being in a place where we could help. Right. As always, Dad. And come to think of it, you didn't think you had anything to share with these people here today. Guess I was wrong on that one, huh? Well, let's let these good folks get on their way, shall we? Thank you, folks, for spending some time with us. Have a great tour.